Oh, sorry, Cisco. All right, Brian, what's the problem? Ah, uh, Chef, we got a monitor down. A monitor down? We need yeah. all the monitors we can it's, get. It's not a good thing here. Well, maybe it's a... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, Chef. Follow this wire here. I don't believe this. Right out of the back of our theater. There's one of those connectors. This is nuts. Hey, fellas! Somebody come out here! This is not right. This isn't right. Look at that. It goes right up to an air conditioner. Right up to an air conditioner. Huh. See that thing? I can get that back. Hey! I thought it was an air... What, you live there? Yeah. What about it? Well, nothing. Uh, you look very nice there. I'm sorry. I thought it was an air conditioner. What are you trying to do? Steal our signal or something? We, you know, we're... No, I wasn't trying to steal your signal. As a matter of fact, I, I was watching Brady Mania. Brady Mania? Yeah. Oh. Wish you hadn't done that. I was just hooking it up to my Nielsen box. You have a... Listen, we're going to get a, a new set to you right away. Hey. Okay? Thanks a lot. I'm very sorry, Tom. Yeah. Hey, when's your premiere? I'll be sure to watch. From Hollywood, it's the Chevy Chase Show. Tonight, actor Tom Selleck. The bizarre world of magician comedian Rudy Kobe. News update. Now, here he is, Chevy Chase! Circus freak. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very little. I want to start our fifth show by, number one, talking a little slower, which will serve two purposes. My viewers will be able to hear every golden syllable. And I won't have talked as much by the end of the show, which I think is a break for all of us. Also, I think you'll find that I'm going to be a lot quieter than other late night hosts because I realize most of you are already tucked cozy away in your little beds <laughs> or perhaps just putting on your negligees and hopping in bed with a wife. And now a personal bit of news that I'm quite proud of. Richard Gere may be married to one of the highest paid models in the world, but I I'm married to the new spokesperson for the Solid Waste Management Board. <laughs> Congratulations, honey. All of your work 
for the environment is finally paying off. Now, can we get the upstairs toilet fixed? <laughs> I was taken by surprise this week, and it's really true that Cheney is now the spokesperson for the solid waste uh, management work. I, I know what liquid waste is. I don't want to think a lot about solid waste, <laughs> but I assume you can break it up with a log. Uh, we, we like to accommodate all kinds of minorities in our studio audience. Uh, that's something that we make sure we do. And in fact, we have a special seat, uh, the best seat in the house, as a matter of fact, reserved right down in front of the stage uh, for, one, for one often overlooked group. That's right. We always keep a seat right down in front for dangerous loners. <laughs> It's easier to keep an eye on them that way. We've got a great show for you tonight. Actor Tom Selleck is with us and magician Rudy Cody. And we're waiting to see this guy. Of course, I'll be doing news update. But right now, say hello to Tom Scott and the band. Hi, guys. Great to see you. Thank you, Chevy. It's time once again for Ask Dr. Chase. If you suspect someone you love may have a problem with alcohol, watch for these signs. Slurs his speech. Stinks of liquor. Vomits at the table. Drives with the doors open. Wipes his face with your tie. Keeps ice in his pockets picks his nose with a fork, licks the TV screen during beer commercials, refers to antifreeze as that quick pick me up, doesn't change the channel when Blossom comes on, nails the toilet lid up to prevent head injuries, has 20 different words to describe the dry heaves, was surprised to learn that there is a tool called a screwdriver, is starting to look more and more like Keith Richards. If someone you love exhibits these symptoms, please call the Park Center Hospital. We care. We always look for Keith and all the new guys. Hello, I, I am Dr. Chase, and I'm here to answer your questions concerning mental and physical health. Now, earlier, my nurse collected questions from our studio audience, which I will now answer free of charge. However, before we start, I'd like you to know that while I'm not a doctor per se, I did finish several semesters of pre-med. <laughs> All right. Our first question is from a Tony Crenshaw. Tony Crenshaw, are you in here? There you are, right there, Tony. The question is... And it's a good question, too. What is a C-section? The C-section is the cheap seats in the back, right back in there. <laughs> My next question comes from Jason Sawyer of Pleasanton, California, beautiful area. The question is, is saran wrap a suitable substitute when a condom is not available? <laughs> I would say yes, although I've found that a bologna sandwich lasts longer uh, when it's wrapped up in a condom. I don't know why that is. Now, here's a question from Esther Fanning from Hayward, California. Esther, are you here? Where are you, Esther? Oh, hi, Esther. And you're from Hayward. Well, uh, your question is... <laughs> what's the difference between anemia and thalassemia? Good question. One is a blood condition. And the, uh, the other, I believe, uh, was a backup singer for Diana Ross. Could be. <laughs> and here's a question from Elise Bogatz from Staten Island, New York. Staten Island, where are you? Elise, I'll answer your question right now. <laughs> Elise asks, when I'm in my car, sometimes I like to catcall pedestrians. Lately, this causes stress to my vocal cords. Are there any preventative measures I can take to ease the strain? Well, 
Absolutely. Try opening the windows. <laughs> no question here. The next question is from Glenn De La Rosa. Glenn, where are you from? Where are you from, Glenn? My arm pound. <laughs> the question is, what causes that pain in the head when drinking a Slurpee from seven, from seven eleven? It's a good question, Glenn. That uh, that pain usually comes from trying to understand the guy behind the counter. <laughs> All right, and now. I'd like to answer some letters I've received. Uh, these are letters that come to me week in and week out, sometimes in the evening, sometimes in the morning. Depends on whether the post office... <laughs> the first letter comes to us from Sam in Columbus, Ohio, and his age is 13. Dear Dr. Chase, is sniffing glue bad? <laughs> yes, Sam, it's very bad. In fact, the other night, I was putting together a model airplane for my nep nephew. And I accidentally inhaled, in fact, I inhaled some just a little while ago, getting this ready. I accidentally inhaled some fumes, and, and look what I ended up with. I was building this model airplane, and I don't think it really worked out. You see? Clear that this. All right. And, uh, but that was a good letter. Keep writing. Our other letter comes from Bill in Joliet, Illinois. He's age 19. Dear Dr. Chase, how can I remove a tattoo? Well, Bill, there are several ways. Uh, I actually have another patient who wants a tattoo removed, uh, but I'd like to say before he comes out that uh, I would suggest a light scraping of the epidermis uh, with a sharp instrument and work away at it that way. But uh, there is a, a, another patient here. Uh, Bob, you want to come out? Yeah, here he is. Hi, Dr. Chase. Hi, how are you, Bob? Good to see you. Uh, I understand that you have a tattoo, and we're, and we're going to show them how this can be removed uh, in, in, in more of a hurry, I guess, than the... Okay. Well, this is actually my ex-girlfriend in the heart, and I, I uh -huh. just wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could use this, I guess. I could yeah. just... Yeah. Stop! Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, you didn't... Well, then you just pull up? Yeah, just, just pull, pull it up. Pull the skin up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that would work. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, keep Thanks. working on that. Thanks, yeah. Dr. Chase. <laughs> Actually, either I'm dead or my watch has stopped. Uh, actually, he was a little too rough on himself. And that's all the time we have today. We hope we'll see you next time for Ask Dr. Chase. And, uh, but that was a good letter. Keep writing. Our other letter comes from Bill in Joliet, Illinois. He's age 19. Dear Dr. Chase, how can I remove a tattoo? Well, Bill, there are several ways. Uh, I actually have another patient who wants a tattoo removed. Uh, but I'd like to say before he comes out that uh, I would suggest a light scraping of the epidermis uh, with a sharp instrument and work away at it that way. But uh, there is a, a, another patient here. Uh, Bob, you want to come out? Yeah, here he is. Hi, Dr. Chase. Hi, how are you, Bob? I understand that you have a tattoo, and we're, and we're going to show them how this can be removed uh, in, in, in more of a hurry, I guess, than the... Okay. Well, this is actually my ex-girlfriend in the heart, and I, I uh -huh. just wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could use this, I guess. I could yeah. just... Yeah. Stop! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't... You didn't just pull up? Yeah, just, just pull, pull it up. Pull the skin up. Yeah. 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 That would work. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, keep Thanks. working on that. Thanks, yeah. Dr. Chase. <laughs> Actually, either I'm dead or my watch has stopped. Uh, actually, he was a little too rough on himself. And that's all the time we have today. We hope we'll see you next time for Ask Dr. Chase. Coming up, Tom Selleck, news update, and Rudy Kobe. So stay tuned. out here very shortly uh, but before I bring Tom out I'd like to tell you that we get a lot of letters uh, a lot of L's and B's I'm just kidding 
And uh, I'm telling you, man, you. Uh, and the le these letters uh, say that they love these mime face things that I do. And I thought I would tell you how I do them. It's, it, it, it started with uh, an old friend, Ken Shapiro, back in Groove Tube. We did our first mime face. And uh, I just love to put white on my face and uh, mimic uh, not only singers, but instruments, which I think you'll find kind of interesting in this uh, little piece here. Could we roll? quiet down or we're gonna have to empty the room right now I'd like to introduce my first guest uh, he started his career as a contract player at Fox he's here tonight to complete his obligations to the studio apparently please welcome Tom Selleck I just shaved and came right over. Thanks a lot for the invite. Sure. Uh, did you get? Did they get the uh, new TV up to you? Not yet, but I'm counting on. Okay. Well. Yeah. Anybody who's got a Nielsen box uh, needs a uh, a nurse. Yeah. I had that since my series until we stayed on the air. How have you been? I've been good. I've been good. You Taking some time off. Great. I mean, I don't know how Feels you good. stay in such beautiful health, but. Uh, well, I'm a I'm a rancher now. You are. You you have a ranch. How are things yeah. on the ranch? Well, they're good when I'm not staying in my, my townhouse down yeah. the street. I'm, uh, I'm out at a, a ranch. And I mean, <laughs> I'm a ranch. I got, I got like two cows and two sheep. It's not a big time ranch. We got three horses and a rabbit and uh, three dogs and a daughter and a wife. Well, there you are. I have the same thing, but in a much smaller area. Uh, three daughters, uh, four dogs, two parrots, uh, three parrots, a fish, and yeah. Uh, yeah. But, about how, but, but I don't have any cattle. Uh, how's, is that difficult to have? Well, actually, I inseminated two cows last week. <laughs> <laughs> any, anybody I know? No, no, no. Uh, I had two cows. Yeah. Inseminated, which was my first, which I'd never seen before. Have you ever seen that? Uh, I did it, in fact, <laughs> with one of our dogs. Yeah. Uh, in a rather... <laughs> Uh, what I mean to say is, yeah. of course, that I artificially had yeah. the dog inseminated. Had, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Who's your from? audience took it another way. Uh, it was some bull semen that yeah. we bought, some mm -hmm. very expensive bull semen, reduced to make it more potent into a very tiny little straw. 
Have you, have you seen this procedure? I've only tasted I, it. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't try it. I, I mean, the, the vet offered, but uh, after, see, the first thing he did, he put on this, this kind of plastic baggy glove yeah. up to about here. Yeah. And the cow and gets in a little did. squeeze chute. And, uh, and then? A actually, he said it's kind of an unpleasant procedure unless you're in Montana in sub-zero weather, and then it's actually quite a pleasant experience. Yeah. So does the bull have to be as close to the edge of the cliff as possible no, wait, wait, wait. so that he backs up? In, uh, well, you can't inseminate a bull. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't work. All of this time, and I thought I had... That's what I thought I was Bill Buckley here. <laughs> uh, you know what? We, we, uh, we have a clip of your latest film. Oh, I didn't know I had anything to plug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, well, we have it here. Oh, I, good, I bet. I, I'd like to... This is one I'm real proud of. Anyway. Oh, it, yeah. I, I hope so. Let's good. take a look. Do you have, can you roll that clip? No, I guess not. Hello? Hello, pretty lady. We're having lunch today. How's noon? <laughs> Well, I remember you. Uh, Jed Andrews, isn't it? Honey, I'm sorry, listen, but I I've got to be in Richmond at noon. Okay, well, uh, I know a fantastic restaurant in Richmond, the Scheherazade. Uh, I'll meet you there at 12 Sharp. Oh. Oh, now, I was going to say, you know... I was just terrified. I were, mean, were you scared? Yeah. Well, yeah, I did that show. I never signed a contract with them. I was Jed Andrews, in case you didn't know. Uh, and, and they hired me about five times a month, you know, and we shot it like live TV. So I'd, I'd, I'd spend enough time away from the set to get terrified every time I, I showed up for work. And then I did the same scene with different words every time I showed up for about two years, and then they dropped me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to hear a lot more about you yeah. and Sinatra and Brando and oh, uh, some go. great stories I know you have. We'll be right back with Tom Selleck. Tommy, uh, we're back with Tom Selleck. Oh, I got to, um, we didn't just get, get two cows inseminated. My daughter would kill me. We, Gertie and Bertie got inseminated. Are those Before. your daughters? No, those are the cows. Oh. <laughs> Gertie and Bertie got inseminated. Before. Are those your daughters? No, those are the cows. Oh. <laughs> Gertie and Bertie. Gertie and Bertie. Hannah. <laughs> okay, and, and she's okay? She's okay. Yeah, she's fine. A bull can be a she's not very dating tough she's thing on a young. Thing. Yeah. Uh, you, you worked with many stars, big ones like Sinatra and Brando, but I, I'm most yeah. interested to hear about your, your, your goings on with Brando and, and the Columbus well, that film. Was, well, Christopher Columbus, the discovery as opposed to as, the, as other opposed one, to yeah. the French one? No, no, there was another one simultaneously yeah. as Hollywood often does. Yeah. I didn't see it. I boycotted it, of course. No, I got, I got asked to be in this movie for about six minutes that, that Brando was in, and all my scenes were supposed to be with him, so I said, uh, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, actually, I ended up getting a little more credit for it than, than I thought I might have deserved, or discredit. But, but it was great to meet him. What, what happened is the film was in a little bit of trouble in the script, so what, I got there, and, and we'd kind of hang out at night late at night. I mean, this is Marlon Brando. This is why I did the movie. In fact, I even wrote You hung it. out with Marlon yeah, late at night? we hung out late at night. Were you at his house when they, uh... No. No, you were <laughs> No, no, no. We... But, but he wrote me a note. I think I can quote him without betraying a confidence, uh, indicating that if we didn't talk, this movie was in danger of arriving at the theaters as flat as an Aunt Jemima pancake was, was his term. <laughs> I don't, it was, it, actually, I don't, I don't like to badmouth movies, but I don't think it turned out that good. But, but the week with him and, and watching him hang out and watching him work and seeing what a sense of humor has, he, he, he kind of likes to stir the pot all the time. Oh, yeah. What does he do? I mean, when, with lines, obviously I'm a movie actor yeah. too, or certainly I used to be. Yeah. What does he, he do? <laughs> you too? Yeah. <laughs> now we're doing this. <laughs> there you go. What is, uh, and thanks for being my sidekick. <laughs> it's nice to be here. What, is, uh, what does Marlon do with, with, with lines? Is it true that he uh, will write them on others' foreheads, as I have? Well, and, he, uh, he didn't write any on me. No? Uh, of course, I was playing the King of Spain. Yeah. That was yeah. my first and maybe my only king. 
Um, because the crown looked a little funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you I don't wore, look like a king uh, of Spain. He, does, he, he, I think sometimes he he learns his lines. I, you know, if, if you got to read something as an actor, I always tell the prop man. I said I'm not learning these lines. I'm supposed to be reading. So, so put it in the book. You know, tape it in the book, and I'll really read it. Yes, yeah. that'd be a lot of work. Yeah. I, I did a scene uh, uh, in in vacation, uh, yeah. Christmas vacation, which I had to swear up and down. I had everybody in front of me wearing a long card of the things I had to say. <laughs> you know, I, I know you won an award for, the, for your role in Columbus. And oh, you, you heard? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you tell I us did. about that? Well, it's a, it's a singular award that I'd never, I'd never been selected. I've, I've gotten a lot of awards, but oh, yeah. I'd never been selected the worst anything. And, and I got <laughs> the Raspberry Award last year for the worst supporting actor in a motion picture. <laughs> now, oh, I know it's... Hey, but hey, not, it's okay. No, you got to take those things with good humor. You yeah. always do. I admire sure, that. I do. What do you mean I always do? <laughs> oh, no. I, I mean... <laughs> we're not, I've never won a, a bad award. <laughs> we're not curing cancer or anything. So I, I called my publicity person. I've what, been what's the name years. of the award? It's the Golden... The, the... No, just not Golden. Oh. Like, just the... the uh, maybe it is a Golden Raspberry. Is it maybe, the Golden Raspberry? It might be the Golden Raspberry. The Raspberry so, one. Okay. Yeah. And I called her up and I said, you know, I, I want to have some uh, sense of humor about this. And also, when's the ceremony? And she said, there is no ceremony. And I said, well, w when do they send me the award? She said, there really isn't any award. And she said, <laughs> I said, well, do I get a certificate or anything? And she says, no. <laughs> so evidently, these people, they just hold a press conference and then they kind of skulk off into the night. And you don't think they give an award out? Well, I didn't feel very validated. No. Put it that way. Uh, Tom. Uh, actually, they do give an award out, and if you'll open this up, it's yours. Really? Yeah. I'm really touched. This is nice. I'm really touched, too. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Can I, can I give my speech? Oh, please. Is that it? Show it close. This is a, uh... Good God. It's a raspberry. <laughs> it's got some green mold on top, and, uh, it's really very it's nice. It's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I... Really, rather than, than your applause, as I say, I was, this is a partial validation, but what would really mean it, it would it, it bring it into concrete reality if all of you on three would maybe put your tongue between your lips and give me the raspberry. And I, I think that would really make me feel a whole lot better. So would you? <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Uh, all right, Tom Selleck is going to hang out with us. Uh, we're coming back with news updates, so don't go away. AWS Jacksonville. With our anger, Chevy Chase. Uh -huh. Honey, I don't care what, whether the water's hot or cold. As long as you put them in your mouth, I... Okay, well, I've got to go. Okay, love you, dear. Good evening, I'm Chevy Chase. Our top story tonight, leaders of the PLO and Israel gathered in Washington today and signed their historic agreement for peace. In a related story, just in from our weathermen, hell has frozen over. <laughs> The White House welcomed Yasser Arafat today after banning him from the U.S. for over two decades. Officials said he was treated with respect as everyone was warned not to ask, what's with the tablecloth and the radiator hose on your head? <laughs> Later, Arafat showed Rabbi Moshe Hirsch the pen with disappearing ink he used to sign the agreement. <laughs> and a new study shows that only half of the adults in the U.S. can read. The other half watch Fox. We'll be right back well, with more news. Stay with us. Oh, boy. Move on in. Oh, boy. Burger, surely you can dig. It's tasty. It's hot. It's juicy. It's so hot. And oh, boy. There we are. <laughs> Hi, I'm Herd Hayden, owner of Oh, Boy Burger. And I'm here to tell you, besides our good food and helpful staff, there's another reason to enjoy Oh, Boy's. It's our secret sauce. <laughs> it's no secret that our secret sauce is no secret. It's ketchup and mayonnaise. 
course, our competitor will never tell you what's in their secret sauce. Why? Because their ingredients violate God's will. Kevin, have you ever tasted our competitor's secret sauce? Gosh, no, Mr. Hayden. I want to go to heaven. Amen, Kevin. Now, I don't want to tell you what's in our competitor's secret sauce. But if you take a research monkey and hit it over the head with a sledgehammer, well, you get a pretty good idea. So come to the burger chain where they don't monkey around. <laughs> and that's our guarantee. Due to the flooding in the Midwest, U.S. farm officials report that the nation's corn crop is down 24% from last year. On the bright side, Missouri saw its biggest lobster harvest ever. <laughs> well, the murder trial of Eric and Lyle Menendez, Menendez continued today with more shocking allegations of parental abuse. Curiously enough, the parents were unavailable for a response. <laughs> He's making a list. He's checking it twice. <laughs> Gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Uh, researchers say that RU486, best known as an abortion pill, may now be used as a labor-inducing drug. Can choose right-to-life groups were seen yesterday picketing their own offices. <laughs> the Clinton administration is considering a plan to list fiberglass insulation as a hazardous substance. For safe insulation, health officials now recommend stuffing your walls with silicone breast implants. <laughs> and finally, Harvard and MIT students can make up to $100 by donating their sperm for research. Officials for the study say while some students donate during the day, most prefer to pull an all-nighter. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. Tomorrow on the Chevy Chase Show, Stephen Stills will be here and the Human Calculator. But right now, stay tuned for the bizarre magician, Rudy Kobe and Tom Scott in the band. Coming up after these words from our sponsors. Yes, yes, a couple of months ago when he walked into my office with four legs and I said, this is definitely somebody I want on my show. Please welcome a great magician, Rudy Kobe. Yeah. Rudy, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing the, uh, cutting your arm off. For oh, us. That thank was nice. you. That same was guy. Fun. Same guy. Is it disgusting enough? Yeah. It's he didn't really cut his arm off. No, I didn't at all. I could, no. I could actually show them how that works if you'd like. Would, would you guys like to see how that works? Yeah. Okay. It's actually, uh, it's actually very simple. It's done with a robotic arm. And uh, it looks real. But uh, see that time you just turn it on right here and you can see it. See it move a little bit right there? It looks kind of real, doesn't it? I mean, from the front it looks kind of real. From the side it looks kind of real. But if you do this, it just speeds up. See that? Isn't that cool, Ted? That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. No Boy, problem. That was close, Rudy. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Chevy, I have something else to show you with yeah. a robot. Oh, yeah? I made something for you. Oh, thank you so and, much. No, really cool. This is really cool. This is my laboratory assistant, Nikki Terminator. Let's get her out here. She's coming out. That's Nikki Terminator. Come on, Chevy. Let's... This is my latest creation. A model 36. <laughs> what do you think, Chad? I think I I I. Uh, uh, <laughs> you want to know what I think? Yeah, I, I do want to know what you think. It looks like she was in a drive-by with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I think it's amazing that these are. This is the real legs. Yeah, they're, it really real... is. It's really cool. Okay, we'll get back to Nikki. I'm going to leave her here for a week. I'm going to Paris, but you can take care of her. If you need a drink, you just hit the button. No problem. Oh, great. okay. But where's the uh, button? Uh, well, I'll give it to you over there. Give her a nice round of applause, thanks. Nikki Terminator. What's here for? Oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> Nikki Terminator, yeah! <laughs> okay. That is mind-boggling. Okay. That is mind-boggling. <laughs> right now... Boggle our minds more. <laughs> right now, I'm going to do something that no other scientist would dare do. I'm going to let the audience decide which experiment we're going to do next. 
Okay, I'll give you two choices. We'll vote with a round of applause. Choice number one, I could do a lecture on the world of fungus. Or I could do choice number two, something dangerous and disgusting. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Now, now, Chevy and Tom will act as professional skeptics. You can take a look at that. It's a real board. Just make sure it's with a nice little self-portrait on the front. It's real nice, enough. Freddy. Very nice. A uh, hammer. Make sure it's a real hammer, Tom. It's a real hammer. A magic marker. Make sure it's a real magic marker. That's a board. <laughs> it's a big night out, huh, Sorry. Tom? Very nice. Yeah. And most importantly of all, Tom, this is a bunch of nails or spikes. <laughs> what you, uh, what, what I need to do spikes. is to pick a nail, any nail. Any nail? Any nail. Right. Make sure it's a real nail. It doesn't bend. It doesn't fold. And then take the magic marker and sign your name in full on the head of the nail as a means of identification. It's not an art project, okay, Tom? Perfect. There. I Perfect. Got it, got it. Because what I am going to do is I'm going to take this hammer and I'm going to pound this spike into my face for your entertainment. Yes! Wait a minute. You just see this. <laughs> it's a real nail. It is a real nail. Yeah, now, right. if you can't see my face, Chev, you can watch Tom's. It right. should be almost as good. Well, you Ready? sit here. Yeah. Are you going to sit? Yeah, I'm going to show it to Because Tom. play to that camera there, I think. That That's, one right there. Yeah, right. and it's I'll watch it on penny one. nail. It's actually a 20 penny nail. I got to see this. Now, Tom. Yeah. Now, Tom, does it look real from the front? If I let go, would that be good? That's disgusting. How's that? <laughs> Does it look real, Tom? Yeah, really. What about from this side? Does it look real from this side? Uh, you know what I love about the Chevy Chase Theater? The intimacy. I can actually come down there and show you that it really is. Yeah, let's get there early, get that front row seat, huh? Can you see that? It really is halfway in and halfway out. But I got a feeling you guys need to see it pounded all the way in. <laughs> And I tell you what, I'll use the microphone so you can see it <laughs> oh, and hear it. It's hammer time. Watch. Oh, no. <laughs> Here, Chevy, this is going to be fun. Oh, no. Watch, oh. nice and soft. Turn, turn the mic up. Yeah, my mom's real proud of this part of the show. Nice and slow, real loud. All the way. <laughs> oh. Ah! Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> now for the most important part. Tom, is that your signature? Oh, yeah, Rudy. Is that it? Yeah. Really? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> now, for the fun part. That's right, we're going to yank that puppy out. Yeah. And I'm going to do it real slow, just for you, Chevy. All Watch right. this. This Go. is cool. <laughs> Please, Chevy, don't do that. Do not try to make me laugh, because if I laugh or I sneeze, I can nail you to your chair from here, okay? So it's important, <laughs> important that you chill out. Watch, nice and slow. This All is right. fun. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, Tom. Can you see okay? Oh, yeah. yeah thanks, okay. Rudy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. yeah. All right. All right. Now. I do. I do. Now. I think Tom was such a nice volunteer. He ought to have that as a souvenir. Cheers, Tom. <laughs> oh, cheers. Thanks, oh, no, no. God. That's fine. I no, 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 no. Look, there's a I, piece of brain right there, Tom. No, that's okay. Look, there's a piece of brain right there. Oh, oh no, nice. it's not. <laughs> you got the booger joke. I'm very proud. Look, under scientific test conditions, I'll All right, the sit light. down. Oh, God. It's real. Okay, we're, we're coming back nice for more surprises <laughs> and some more music. Coming back with more surprises, more music from Tom Scott. Rudy Cody. <laughs> Folks at home, and particularly children watching at this late hour, like mine, like Emily, you better go to your own bed tonight. <laughs> Don't try that nail trick at home because uh, it really does get very close to the brain, except in Rudy's case. <laughs> I've got a frog in my throat. I'm fine. Hey, you know something, Tom? What, Jeff? This is... <laughs> I know you're wondering about these I'm rubber bands. I'm wondering about the rubber bands. Well, we, yeah. uh, there's, a, there's a sort of a game I like to play, and it goes like this. Mm. Take a rubber band and you put it right here. And can you do that? Yeah. Okay. 
Tom, are you ready with a little rubber band music? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. It'll go, it'll go down as far as you can on your neck, yeah. Now, when Tom starts, we, we're going to see who can get... Let me see, i got to get a, in a good shot here with... with, uh, with let's sell it. What's a good shot? How about that camera? That one. Okay, it's a race. Anytime you're ready, Tom. Why are we oh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> the idea yeah. is to get the rubber band to the top of your head. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. No. To get it all right down to your neck. Oh, okay? Easy. Yeah. No touching. No touching. <laughs> Find your mark. Get set. Go. I think you've done that before. I, I, I've never won. I've never won in my life. <laughs> well, now that's a, that's on show. That's pretty sophisticated stuff. You know, uh, when you were on Magnum P.I., I also yeah. happen to know you worked with Frank Sinatra, who's one of my favorite guys. And yeah, I, I, I if you have a short story about him, I'd love to hear it because uh, um, I want you to get in trouble. Well, yeah, Frank wanted, you know, I didn't believe Frank when he said he wanted to do the show, because I hardly knew him, but Larry Minetti from our show did. And Larry Minetti, if you know him and could bottle him, he, he wants to be Frank Sinatra. And Frank came and did the show, but everybody was real nervous, because, you know, part of his volatility is, is, is part of his talent, you know. And, and Frank isn't real patient. He likes to do things in one take, and generally he's kind of perfect and best on the first take. So he did this whole fight sequence, and Larry Minetti's like a little kid, like his idol is working. Larry wasn't in the scene, and he did this whole fight sequence. Frank threw every punch, did everything himself, uh, himself, and it was perfect. And at the end of it, the director looked real sheepish as some guy came up and, and whispered in his ear, and he turned kind of ghost white. And he went over to Frank. He says, Frank, we're going to have to do it again. Somebody took a flash picture in the middle of the fight. And everybody immediately looks around the room, and there is Larry Minetti with a Polaroid camera with the picture spit out at the front developing of Frank going like this and Larry's going, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And that's kind of Larry And, and he's coming toward yeah. the camera in the picture. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Frank did it again, though. Yeah. But, but we had to kind of beg him. Yeah, I heard that uh, also he doesn't like to get up uh, before noon because he's, he's up all night, usually. Uh... Frank likes to stay out late. Yeah, he likes to and stay he out. Likes, he's he's get everybody right to... who's with him to stay out late with him. Yeah. I, I had that experience. I had that yeah. experience with Did him. you? Yeah. <laughs> like, where are you going, Chevy? Sit down? <laughs> he yeah. said, have a drink. You know, it was one in the morning. <laughs> yeah. There you go. We'll be right back. Tomorrow night, Stephen Stills is going to be here, and they, uh, somebody they call the human calculator uh, could be my wife. I'd <laughs> very much I'd like to thank Tom Selleck for being with us. Great to have you. And Rudy Toby and Tom Scott and the band, and uh, you want to shoot a couple of hoops on our way out? Hey, you bet. Okay, thanks, folks.